Hello, Roxy Fox. Hello, Cecil. Nice to see you again. Oh, nice to see you again, too. You know what? I brought you something. It's a present. Oh, oh, Cesar, you shouldn't have. Yes, I know you like to eat meat. No, 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 I mean you shouldn't have. I have lots of wolves out there getting me lots of meals already. Hello and welcome to Caesar Snack Sandwich. Today we're on Ethereum taking a look at Yearn, one of the Yearn volts, and I'm sure you know which one I'm going to look at, but it's this one here, the Dive version 2. Now it, the APY is pretty good, 21%, but this is not what really interests me. Um, I'm going to get into the mechanics behind this vault and talk about why it's interesting to me. So before I get into the flow chart, I would like to show you a couple tweets, okay? So Andre tweeted this out, and this is pretty much like a diagram of what's happening. So I'm gonna, I remade this, and I'm gonna talk about this and show you what each of these things are and how they work and so forth. And then I also want to show you this here. This is a, a, a tweet by Scroopy Trooples, and she's, or he, whatever they are, they are uh, one of the founders of Alchemex FX. This is a pretty cool protocol, and I think you should check it out. It's a way to uh, borrow some DAI or borrow some tokens, and then by borrowing, you automatically pay off your debt just slowly, you know, because you have to stake collateral, and your collateral will gain interest, and that interest will then slowly pay off your debt. So you don't have to worry too much about paying off your debt. It will be paid off by itself in time. So it's pretty interesting, but the main thing is, hey, you know, there's a lot of Y, or sorry, there's a lot of DAI in the Y vault now, quite a bit. So this is interesting to me, it's worth talking about, and let's go over to the flowchart and I will show you what's happening inside the vault. Okay, so here we are on the flowchart. Now it's been a little while since I've done one of these flowchart videos, so I might be a little bit rusty, so bear with me, okay? So anyway, so here we have Dollar Bill. He has some dye, right? So he comes to Yearn and he finds this Yearn Vault. I'm gonna call it Foxy Vault today. You can call it whatever you want, but it's the Y version two Vault. So I'm gonna use this Fox to represent that today. So he knows some ideas. He has some ideas how to use dye to make some money, right? So the first strategy this vault has. Now remember, this is a vault and it can have multiple strategies. So one of the strategies is called the general lender. Now there's another name for it, but this will be suitable for our this description. So it's going to send 18% of whatever is in the vault to the general lender. Now this number can change, but currently that's what it's set to about. So we can just leave it at 18% for now. So they sent 18% to the general lender, and then the general lender decides where to send it, like whichever of these lending protocols are the best yielding right now. Now currently it's sending it to DYDX, and I'll explain why, but this is kind of the idea, is that you know this general lender strategy will look at the different APYs here and the different use cases and stuff, and try to decide where to put this amount of the die that it has lent to this strategy, okay? Now, what can happen here is maybe some other person will borrow some die and use it to farm some tokens, like maybe Caesar tokens. There's some sort of Caesar token geyser somewhere and they need die to farm it, right? So this is just an example, it's not real, but you get the idea. So other people will come here, other protocols will come here and borrow die and use it to do something, okay? So that's how it gains this yield. So that's pretty much the first strategy that's currently live inside this vault. Now the next one is the Alpha Homora version two. So 20% gets sent to Alpha Homora version two. Now Alpha Homora version two is similar to the first one here in that it's another way for you to lend. So they send the die here, people will borrow this die and use it on Alpha Homora to build some LPs, okay? So other people will come to Alpha Homora and they will you know, you borrow, maybe borrow some ETH and some to, to farm some Caesar or maybe some die or something. So they need to usually borrow the token that is given and not necessarily ETH here. So, but maybe there's a die, you know, a Caesar token here and they can farm this, they can leverage into it. So they use their own die or their own ETH or whatever and they borrow some from this protocol. Now, 
there are many different tokens that you can borrow here. So they could do this Alpha Homora with other tokens as well. It's just like ETH. They could use ETH here and send it to this kind of contract. It would be slightly different, but the system would be the same and it's lending it basically to here. And so they're giving 20% now to this strategy. Okay, the next one is the Lev Comp. So I've done a video on this and I explained it in detail a little bit more. I'll link to that video here, but it's a little bit, uh, I can explain it a little bit generally here, a little quicker here, and just give you a general idea what's happening. So 60% of his funds or the funds inside the vault are being offered to this strategy, lent to this strategy. Okay, so what is this leverage compound going to do with the 60% that they have gotten from the vault from Foxy here is they're going to send $1 million of it to compound. And at the same time, they're going to initiate a flash loan from DYDX and send that into compound. So they get a total of $4 million into compound this way. And then they will borrow the $3 million from compound and pay off DYDX. Okay, so pay off the flash loan. So the flash loan gets nullified and canceled, but they still have a fair amount inside there. Okay. So then what will they do? They then can, why would they do this? Now they do this because they want to earn some comp tokens. Now by earning comp tokens, they can take those to Uniswap, sell them for more DAI and put the DAI into the strategy. And eventually some of these profits will go back to the vault when they need to declare profit and pay stuff as well. Okay, so that pretty much covers what's happening here. Okay, the next strategy is called the Iron Bank strategy, Iron Bank leverage compound. Now it works very similar to this one in that, but they only have a 1%. They only get 1% of this entire vault because of some restrictions. Now, what does Iron Bank do? Iron Bank is a cream yearn merger type protocol thing. Now what it does is it allows certain places to borrow money without having any collateral. So certain you know contracts that are deemed safe enough can borrow a certain amount of money deemed enough by cream so cream will then assess the, the risk of this contract here this strategy and say how much they can borrow so they borrow three million from cream and they have maybe their own million from you know the vault and they send this four million into compound and do pretty much the same thing now what do they do with those is again they get rewards and comp tokens and they send them to uniswap and send them to die and back to the vault as well okay back to the strategy and then back to the vault now like i said off the very bad now why i like this why do i find this to be very interesting is one it's quite complex and i like complicated things but they're simple complex they're simple things but they are a lot of them going on and they can put more and more and more of these little strategies inside here to do things right but the other thing I really like about this is that it is utilizing a lot of protocols in the ecosystem. So we've got DYDX, we've got MakerDAO, we've got Alpha Homori, we've got Cream, sometimes Cream, right? We've got Compound and we have Iron Banks and Uniswap. So this one vault is using all of these different protocols and giving value to them all and utilizing them all. Like I'm just like every other person and you know, I do care about APYs and I do farm some crazy APYs, but at the same time, I like to know that things are synergizing with other protocols. They're working hand in hand and not just farming each other and vampirizing each other is so much. So I like this strategy. I like this vault and I like these strategies. Now they can go maybe a step further, you know, maybe they can start to make a strategy that does this, you know, so actually borrows the, the, the die that they are taking and uses that die to build a strategy, to build an LP and get some of this APY that's here. And maybe they can do this as well. Like if they find they borrow some die from here and use it to, to do this, but you'll have to notice as well that they have supplied die to DYDX and here they are using die. So by supplying die here, they are ensuring that the die is here for this flash loan and this one. So there's some synergy between these two, these two strategies right here. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments below. Now I, you know, I've used some rough numbers here and I don't really care about APYs too much, but you know, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.